In the early 1960s, a young physician by the name of Irving Selikoff makes it one of his life works to study asbestos disease that he's seeing in workers. Dr. Selikoff is not the person who discovers asbestos disease, as it has been known for decades. Rather, Dr. Selikoff believes that it is his mission to publicize the fact that thousands of workers are getting sick and will die from their exposure to asbestos. Publicly, the asbestos industry pretends to cooperate with Dr. Selikoff. Privately, however, the monster public relations machine continues to turn for industry, and the companies internally actually mock the workers. Throughout the 1960s, a few other cases are quietly settled as industry rejects the public's ignorance. The insurance industry, who is working hand in hand with the manufacturers, is clearly aware of the public health time bomb that is being created. Yet the conspiracy of silence continues. In 1973, the asbestos industry actually commissions a survey to determine the level of the public's awareness concerning the dangers of asbestos. Matthew Switanik, the director of the asbestos industry's leading lobbying group, the Asbestos Information Association, reports the results of this survey at a meeting in Washington, D.C. He tells the crowd that he has good news and bad news. First, the bad news. Dr. Selikoff's estimate concerning how many people will die from asbestos is far too low. But do you want to hear the good news? The good news is that despite all the negative publicity concerning the dangers of asbestos, the public is still ignorant. 